Got some upgrades, got some fixes, and got some updates for the LS1 E36. Also, I have a dyno day scheduled for the car that's gonna lead into getting this car to work with ethanol because I do wanna have it tuned for pump gas as well as E85. So I gotta get that configured in my Holly Terminator, add some arrow to the car, and do some other fixes. So I've had these laying around here for a few weeks now, debating if I want to put them on or not. I think I'm gonna, because my factory bumper isn't that great to begin with. I mean, eventually when I get the car resprayed, it's gonna need replaced. There's like a couple cracks in it, paint's chipping a little bit. So I figured I'll install these and see what they look like. And if I don't like them, when I get a new bumper, I won't put them back on. So these are a set of double canards for the front. They are legit carbon fiber, very, very light. Pick them up off eBay. Link to these will be in the description box. Or we're gonna see how they fit. We're gonna see if they tie in pretty well with all the other carbon fiber bits on the car. So I'm gonna install these, shouldn't take too long. I'm planning on doing rib nuts with bolts that match the bolts that are already on my over fender so it all kind of ties together. So I'm gonna mark these up Probably put them on with some tape and figure out exactly where I want them. Then we'll do a quick install with rib nuts. I'm also gonna put a little bit of double-sided tape on here because I don't trust just those screws because rib nuts aren't gonna be as secure in plastic in a plastic bumper as they would in something metal. Got one done, gotta finish drilling the holes for the top, this side will be done. All right, so now just to do the whole thing again on the other side and make sure that they match. So I gotta do some measuring, do some taping, some drilling, some rib nutting, some bolting. We'll be done.
Okay, got both sides on. I'm actually pretty happy with how it looks. I thought it would maybe look janky or kind of like trying too hard or something, but I think it looks pretty good. I may end up swapping out from rib nuts to just bolts and nuts on the backside. I'm not totally confident those rib nuts will hold, but I know the double-sided tape will hold, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it. Check these things out, guys, and let me know what you think. Canards are installed. Let me know what you guys think. They look kind of dumb. They look like they don't belong. I don't know. I, I like them, but I don't want to seem like a poser. Quick word from the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of different classes and courses you can find online to suit almost any of your needs. And these class topics really range. And some examples are illustration, graphic design, creative writing, music, music production, film, and video, which of course is very useful to me. Web development, crafts, cooking, I mean, you name it, the list goes on and on. And some classes that I've explored are, of course, related to YouTube, filming, editing, and as well as photography. As I love taking pictures of my cars, who doesn't? Skillshare is curated specifically for learning and there's no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes, so you can follow wherever your creativity takes you. Plus, they offer it in multiple languages. So the first thousand people to sign up through the link I have listed below will get a free month trial of Skillshare. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. But now we have an issue with the LS swap that I need to fix. Hopefully, we'll fix it today. So I drove this the other day and shut it off and the electric fan kept running. Had no idea why, it's not supposed to do that. The Holly Terminator runs the electric fan on here, which I can figure through that, but it's not supposed to run when the key's off. So wasn't sure why that was happening. So I pulled my engine cover off, took a look at the relay, and I smacked it around a couple times. Then it turned off. So I'm guessing just the relay is, is failing or has failed, so I ordered a new one. Hopefully that'll take care of the problem. Looks to be the same one. Throw this in quick. Hopefully that fixes the problem because otherwise the fan would just run until the battery died. Since I have the ECU cover off, I'm gonna finally hook up my E85 sensor. I need to configure it, maybe make some other changes in the tune and software because I've never done that on my laptop. I just actually bought the USB cable to hook up to the Holly, which I haven't done yet. Let's see if I can get this E85 sensor to work. Just bought this cable, but not used it yet. And I have the software downloaded here. Don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm gonna plug it in and see what I can figure out. And forgive me guys, I don't know if I need the key on. Oh, here we go, download from ECU. It says it's syncing. Turn the key on. Ah, there we go. Yeah, I had to have the key on, that was a problem. How do I add one? Okay, did a whole bunch of updating to the software in the touchscreen, in the ECU itself. Now I can try to focus on getting this E85 thing to work. This is all new to me. Okay, so after a ton of research, online, looking through user manuals, talking to people online, it was, that was a pain in the butt to set up. Anyway, my E85 sensor, I wired that in whenever I did the swap. It's wired into input one of the Holly. I had to configure all that, mess with all this. It's a lot of work. I think I got it figured out. So if we go in here and go to gauges, if you look down here, I have flex fuel sitting there. Now it's not reading anything right now. If I start the car, it might work. <laughs> Wish me luck. Aha! I got it, boys. Flex fuel, flex fuel, 11%. That was a freaking pain. 
Okay, now I wanna see, really don't know if it's possible, if I can display that on the digital dash. So that's the next job. Now to see if that's gonna work, I'm gonna update the firmware on my dash because I've never done that, and maybe that'll give me the best chance of being able to get an E85 gauge on there. Conveniently, I have my USB thing right here. Did it work? I don't know. It still says unsupported ECU type upgrade required. Maybe I downloaded the wrong update. Let's try this again. Did it work? Maybe? All right, it no longer says unsupported ECU type. So that's good, it used to say it right there. Now let's see if we can mess with these gauges at all. I just saw it said flex fuel. Let's move some of these boys around. Ooh, not bad. All right, moment of truth. Aha! Uh -huh. We got her to work, boys. We got her to work. We got 10%. I'm stoked about that. That's freaking sweet. I don't really like that it's red, though. Let's see what we can do there. There we go. No more red. Nice. I'm freaking stoked. I've been wanting to do that for a while, and I just never got around to it. Also, electric fan is definitely fixed. It's no longer running, but when I drove the car earlier today, after replacing the relay, it was working while the engine was running. Turned the engine off. Stopped. All right, now just to clean up this little bit of a wiring mess that I have, put my ECU cover back on. That's a wrap. All better, neat and tidy like it was before. That's all for this video, boys. Thanks for watching, thanks for your support, and we'll see you in the next one.